in the public meeting to order. First up is public comment. Let's comment on anything not on the agenda. Seeing none, we'll move to approval of the agenda. I move to approve the agenda as emailed by Trevor. Second. All those in favor? Okay, Aye. 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 Uh, consider approving prior meeting minutes. I move that we accept the minutes for both the October 17th meeting and the October 24th meeting. I just have a comment about the the last meeting, which was the 24th. We did receive an email from uh, Marty Strange that yeah. he complained that it wasn't reflected in the minutes about his communication, and we did talk about it here. It's yes, not in did. the minutes. So okay. uh, this says there's none to report, but we did discuss it. Yeah. I so maybe with, a, we can add that, yes. with the uh, addition of under number six on the October 24th minutes. We, um, did, we didn't talk about it much. However, could I ask that we put in the amendment that you're requesting, but under public comment. Well, it was communication and correspondence. No different than someone sitting in the crowd here making a public um, We have a specific part on the agenda for communications that were sent for people to talk about letters that came in or anything that came in to Trevor about the committee. And I wasn't quite done with my motion to I'm sorry. amend no, it. I'm just, but, no, um, I'm just, I was just trying to. Technically, we can't that. amend until we have a second, then we have friendly discussion. And then we decide if we're amending. But. Well, my suggestion was just that we that the minutes should num under number six should reflect that we did discuss correspondence received from Marty Strange by email to the committee, as opposed to there was none to report. That's my proposed amendment to the October twenty fourth minutes. Well, we don't have right. a motion and a second for minutes to I will amend second. yet. <laughs> I will <laughs> so second Neil's motion to accept both sets of minutes. Oh, I see what you're saying. There. Okay. Yeah. And now we have Kristen making an amendment to it. Yes. So do you accept the amendment? I accept the amendment as well. And Neil accepts the amendment? Yes. Okay. Now we have a motion with an amendment. And a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Right. So I have a question about that. Yeah. Emails and such that may be sent to me, do they, can I be entered? Mm -hmm. Yep. You send them strange. to the, the committee and then it gets listed. Or does it have to be an email to the whole committee? No, it can come to you and you can forward it to the whole committee. Okay. And then it gets entered in. Okay. Great. Great. Thank you. Sure. All right. Next up is business. And Neil has asked to jump in front of the barn. I just have a, a quick comment about a vision I have for the police department. I hope that once we get to the police department, whatever we decide it is, that we can organize a citizens review committee <coughs> for <coughs> police operations. It is something that has come out of the police reform movement. It's something that I think is important and agree with and I know that Scott agrees with me. Um, there are nationwide associations that deal with these, with these committees, so at such time as we go to do something, we would have plenty of resource to um, help advise us to how to do something with this particular given town. So, to quote Forrest Gump, that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> Was that quick enough? You're good. You're good. Um, <coughs> I don't see anybody here from the barn and nobody online. Yeah, Kim had, Kim had followed up. She was out today. Um, we'll keep trying. You're going to have another meeting, at least in the in-between, so we'll, we'll keep making it open work. So uh, discuss operating options, continue budget review. So we haven't done anything updated from last time, so those version two sheets, and I can pull them all up again if you want to see them, are the same ones that laid out kind of what we call existing, modified, and town districts, so three primary models that, that we've done. I do have a quick sheet that I can hand around. You guys had asked for just some quick tax calculations. So what is on this sheet is um, the... 
we've got the existing and the town wide. The reason we start with those two is because those are the ones we have the approved grant list for because they're already in place. I can give you a rough idea of what a modified district would be. We've just got to add the Windover Triangle and some of the southern properties to that grant list to get you a better number. I just didn't have time to get there. Today. I think it's a work in progress. Yeah. yeah. Very, very much so. So, the, so I went back and looked at what we did have in that value. So I can at least tell you where we landed before we made a few addition, additional. So it does go up to that um, intersection in Randolph Center. It does go down at least to get the Shaws. We just got to get that little southern loop and the little wind over thing in there to get that number. So I didn't put it. We've got a similar table for it. I just don't have it in there because it's coming along. The caveat that I would mentioned in the email to you all is still there and that these grand list values that you look at, these rates that you look at when we get to August, no matter what the model is you pick, none of these are going to be there. Um, based on the time of reappraisal, that grand list will be something completely different. So what we've used in here is what we filed with our 411 as part of an annual process. So that comes through the lister's office. So those values are, are from that. Um, and so at the top, I just tried to put two rates down for you. One's the tax rate for the police district as it was set in August by the board. The other one is trying to quantify that general fund payment for service. So what we did to do that, there's a note on it in the bottom, but it's in pretty tiny text. Actually, I'm, let me pull it up on the screen for you, too. I think I put it in this folder. Everything works. this up here in a second, Steph. Um, but these numbers oh, in the budget don't include a new building in the town wide, right? For the vehicles. If we add the vehicles. This doesn't, yeah, these are just the operating budget, so that's the capital transfers that are in there, but then the cost of the new vehicles will still have to be figured out, so some of the options come into, we've talked about everything from lease to own, to trying to pay for them outright, if we did that, the only source of money that's left that's sufficient to cover that would be something like another allocation of ARPA funds, there's about 30000 left over from the original, um, 200000 set aside, i got to open this in a different program. If you took, uh, say, actually, do I have that one? Um, all funds right down to water and wastewater, you're getting closer to that 9 to 11 range, but those are the enterprise funds are a little different. General funds, 3 and a half ish to 4. Um, I think we're going to land drafts are around 3 8, 3 9. Another 2 million or so for highway. Whatever we do for this, library ends up being a little less than 400, I think. They're in the 360, 380 range. Um, special appropri appropriations are another a little less than 100,000, but they're voted separately. And then water and wastewater, another couple million combined. We do have budgets for landfill operations, so we've got the capital landfill. There's some costs associated with that, but those are paid for through non property tax revenues. So. All funds, I think. I'm trying to remember where we landed. I want to say it was like nine million when we did this, like the full all funds so exercise. General, yeah. yeah. But all of them would be property tax, except for water and wastewater, um, and then that landfill is paid, paid essentially from some um, um, more or less investment income from when it was capped, and there was a closure amount set aside, and and so there's some things like that. So here it is up on the screen. So to calculate this one was just to try to put how many cents per $100 on the value. So it's less than two cents of the overall town-wide rate. Um, go for that $100,000 payment for services. And the way I calculated it is I took the 100000 that was in the 24 budget, and there's a little bit of revenue shown for ticket fees, for example. So what we did it just like we would do for any of the rest of these. You look at the total amount of spending, you subtract any non-tax revenue, and that's the amount to be raised by taxes. So in trying to get that first model, that was how we got that rough, you know, what does Joe pay now versus, you know, what's Neil pay now on the two rates. Um, so you can see with that last version, version two, and we can talk a little bit about what this number and where it is, but we just took that because it's the last number you've seen. Here's the non-tax revenue that goes with it. 
included in that 187, though, is that 100 from the general fund um, that goes in there. And so to be raised by property taxes to make the rest of it up, again, this is all on the district, you divide this number by this number to get this number. So you can see that budget from where we're at, 24 is it's beefy, um, about 23 cents per 100 of assessed value. And then when you come down to the townwide, obviously we get rid of the $100,000 payment for service because it's all general fund in this model. Um, and then we boost some other things. We combine some of the non-tax revenues. So that's why it's not a straight, you know, 87 to 87. So it's 103.5 in non-tax revenue. So you get your tax to be raised by taxes. You got your grand list from the 411, and you get a townwide tax rate of about 25 cents per 100. And you can see for outside the district, it's about 23 cents. So in either model, you're about 23 cents give or take. Um, for folks inside the district, there's about a three cent increase based on these very rough metrics. When you look at that modified district before we add those two pieces, you actually end up pretty close to this rate. Um, because remember, the budget's a little bigger, the staffing footprint was a little bigger, so you've added some costs, but you also add some grand list value. And so in that earlier model, it was about 49 cents, but just the ones that we had would be that modified district rate. We add the other ones, it'll probably come to around that 45 cents in terms of the total lease rate for that modified district. With this, with that budget value for the modified. So is this, Trevor? I want to be asking: Is this um, based upon the current grand list value and not the reappraised? Right. Kind of yeah. Right, this right. grand list value from the. Not that that matters. Is the dollars yeah. will just work out the same either way. Right. 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 Based about. Yeah. Grand list should. Yeah. If everything works the way it should, reappraisal will come back. Grand list will go up. Tax rates will go down. The amount to be paid. Be the same. Your tax bill should stay the same. Right, right, right. right. Individuals, Unless your property is valued more or right. whatever, whatever, but, but right. Yeah, individuals so, might see right. fluctuation, but that's right. theoretically. Right, absolutely. Yeah. So it just gives you a sense of impact, I think. So on a... So a $250,000 home. Um, so on, a, on a fairly simple, a $200,000 home is a $500 tax increase outside the district. If you just take it at twenty three cents, it's four sixty either way you right, slice right. it. Yeah. Right. So four hundred thousand dollar home, because we have a lot of large properties outside the district if their if their land's taken into a home's kinda of said, okay, only house in two acres or whatever type type, type of a thing like that. So on you know on, on you know, four or you know, what does it what does it do to say a farm? Yeah. You know, Pinello farm, I bet you get a million dollars in that in, 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 in farm. Other, other, other farms are, are maybe more or less, but you know, maybe, but there's large properties, lots of buildings, blah, blah, blah. You know, so that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a huge, huge hit on, on those properties and those farmers. You know, you know, so. And some of the things we can look of, at, I mean, when you think of there, where there are areas for, either with your recommendations or for the board later, I think, to make an impact on sort of rate, there are really only two ends of it, and one of them probably isn't all that substantial in terms of the impact. So when you look at non-tax revenue, there are only so many sources, and so far you can go. Because even if we get super aggressive with traffic enforcement, that can boost that amount. Yeah, yeah. That's what that those officers are doing with their time. State so you can probably make an impact and bring it down and leave the spending the same, but it's there are trade-offs to that. You don't really have a lot of sources. Or you have to look right. at the spending end and now we're back, and it's kind of the same set of challenges of can we make a smaller footprint work in some way in any of the models without baking in some of the problems we already know from experience don't work. I think the other piece of it is, is at the present, what the, what the present budget, that this is based upon the present budgets that kind of been put out on those other sheets. Um, that, that said, it's actually it's cheaper for in the district to keep it just in the district than it is to expand the district because they're going to see a three cent tax increase to expand it outside the district's going to see a 25 cent tax increase or 23 point whatever it's incentive increase but the in the district by by your present budget it's actually cheaper for them to 
stay just in the district. <coughs> So if we look at the total cost, though, to going town-wide, we're going to have to bond for a new station, right? Yeah. That, and that, so you're going to have a bond payment in there, too, and additional vehicles. So mm -hmm. you're really only looking at a portion of the right. cost when you look at this, because you've got... So... I mean, I bet you you're going to be in the um, two, and, two to... Uh, looking at building costs right now and what we're paying on some of our buildings, I bet you're in the two to three million range to build a police station. Easy. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. What do we say for a metric? I'm trying to remember. With each model, it was we wanted two, two cars per model, kind of thing. Yeah, we got two cars for the existing that need to be replaced, mm -hmm. and then we were at four additional cars needed for town wide plus a building. And we figured it was sixty. Fully outfitted for car, so for four cars, you're about 340. Yeah, that's right. 240, sorry. No, okay. A quarter of a million. So three, three and a quarter million in capital. In capital, right. The thing is, nobody, nobody wants to pay for it until they need it. Yeah. And then when, once they need it, if you break it down, I mean, it's like, a, you know, so many dollars per day that you're paying for to have the security of having a police force at the ready to assist you if you need it. Unless you're a large landowner for a farm and you're paying on a million dollars and you're, you know, that's a lot of money to pay for one house that needs may or it. may not need the service, yeah. Yeah. You know, I think that's a. And I, I still don't believe that we've proven that the service is needed. Do we have million dollar farms? <coughs> sure we do. Look at some of these farms, the land they own. Mm -hmm. They're paying it. Mm -hmm. We can also, yeah. with some of these, I forgot to mention that um, the COPS grant modeling, if we fully baked that out, we can probably get that number down um, based on a couple of, if we just took the model we used last spring in terms of some, some of those costs that show up. I mean, that's still the budget, but that amount to be raised by taxes is a little less because we've got to have those revenues to come in as well. The gamble being that you have to get the cops ran. Right. Um, and you got to absorb that at some point. So while it eases you into it, what we should be evaluating is what's the total cost going to be when we're paying the bill and what is that impact. And, yeah, you'll get a break and get eased into it. But in year four or year two or whatever year you've expended the grant, you're stuck. That's a lot. That's a lot of money. And who do we have right now who's writing grants or, or looking for grants that have to do with law enforcement? More of a, I don't want to say catch as catch can. There's a pretty good sense of the main ones that are out there. So Governor's Highway Safety Program, JM actually did a lot of the legwork on that, thankfully. Brought that expertise with him when he joined. Um, we got a passive grant for some equipment. That was one that they let us know was there. Lower dollar amount, but pretty big impact. They're easy. Um, and then COPS grant will have to, when we were doing the application last year, it was kind of a team effort in terms of who had to put what pieces in. I think Rose did a lot of the initial input, at least. Um, but other than the COPS grant, we don't do any other federal grants? Uh, we haven't for policing, at least yet. We haven't needed to. Right. Because I, I just see a lot of best, right? DOJ and uh, BJA and DOJ grants mm -hmm. for, you know, enhancing what they call community policing in various aspects, whether it's substance use, you know, targeting substance use or mm -hmm. mental health or domestic violence. There's lots of different federal dollars. Yeah, but you need some. Really looking at, like, you know, it's really kind of dedicated in search in regards to looking for that COPS grant. I get them, 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 I get them,
Mm. Yeah. yeah, and uh, my experience with the grants is that they look really nice up top, but when you get down to the weeds and take a look, and there's a lot of that we may not even be able to apply for. We just don't meet the criteria of what they're looking for. So or, or the, the requirements are so stringent that it's not worth it. Correct. Dollars. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. 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 Like, like, did you have your own interest in some of that stuff? Is that, is that, is that, is that he did some of that? Is that a few here, 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 Sometimes they call all the grants. Yeah. Um, the, the, the town has, has to be after the court the state, state requires, requires it, and then, and then that takes staff, staff hours. hours. Yeah. Yeah. That we don't, we don't necessarily, necessarily have. have. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and the partner is really, really good about sending, sending the day to the day to the reports or the different stuff that you're chasing it with no money. They don't pay for the position. They don't. There's nothing in it for the town per se for the management grant. And the problem is the state has shifted to that model with so, so many programs that, that the town now has a lot of grants on the books, books and a lot of our partners that are quite coming, coming to the table. The table. And you, and you don't even get administrative fee on the grant. Some of you have to go. We have to go about capturing this one thing because we've essentially said that if we can charge our administrative costs for what we do, we're planning past our time, we plan on how long getting. Service, so, 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 Am I missing something? I'm missing something. I'm looking at the uh, 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 five twenty four to eight fifty six. That's, that's a given, given anyway. anyway. That presumes we go to what we highlighted as the right, the right size, size, the right model, model but, but two, two still still the same district. district. That would still, still be the district. district. Still have district. That. Still have that. that. Payment for services outside the district is going to take Okay. okay. You, you took my example. Sorry, sorry. Go back. Let's go back. Yeah, yeah. When, when, when I, I look at this number, it looks huge, huge but, it but it really, really that's, that's really, really only, only the difference, difference from 8 to 6. Yep. Yep. This, this is the, this, this one, one here, the 8 to 6 scales out of 5 to 24. Right. You can think of it as they all scale off the 8 to 6. But they, but they really, really should, should go off the 856, so they're not, not, that, right. not, not that, that bad. bad. And the and same thing here. Right. 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 So one, 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 one builds to the operational footprint of the community app, and then if we carry that forward, forward into the expanded, expanded models, models each, each one has more coverage, coverage area. area. But, but, but remember, we couldn't get the $800,000 worth of it. It got voted down. Uh, well, I remember that. So the five hundred thousand is what got through. through. Yeah, you know, I, so I, 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 it is. It is even, if even if we modify, modify the district, district, we're basically, we're basically double 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 from what we passed. Okay, but okay. 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 that's on the assumption that next year you can only get five twenty four. Right. So we either try for what's a realistic budget for the existing thing, okay, or we go up. Right, right, right. right. Modify, we'll take, we'll take a couple, a couple hundred thousand dollars. dollars. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's the point I'm trying to make. The, the yeah. difference is yeah. really, yeah. really. You can do you it two ways. ways. It's really, really a couple, a couple hundred, hundred thousand, thousand right? Two hundred and about two hundred and one, two hundred thousand dollars more. 
than the existing. It looks, looks better, better that, that way. way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so to you, 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 you sound, sound to me like, to me like, like you don't you have don't a lot of um, hope, hope or faith or whatever, whatever that, that we can, we can that, that, that we get the budget, budget more, more than, than we already have. Am I reading that right? I don't think you're going to get a town by that. Right. right. I, I, I think that's a big, big one. And I think, I think that, that if you're, you're, you're in, in over a million, million, million you just have half expense on top of that. That's a big payment. Yeah. 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 And, so and so is the process really essential for the process, for the process, process because, because we're having this public meeting. meeting. So, so uh, uh, this committee makes a recommendation to the select board, which includes that include the feedback, the feedback we get, get at the at public, the public meeting? meeting? Or does, or does we, we get, get the public, public feedback, feedback before we make a pair recommendation? I think right. we got to hear what the public says. Right. 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 So right. there's a gap in the public to say, and then we incorporate that into our process. process. Yeah. And what would that have done for the Okay. That makes a lot more sense. And for a town-wide one, as far as like a building, I mean, you'd have to have a whole separate committee to really give people the exact thing. I mean, it would be hard to vote on something you don't know. For sure. For sure. But your, but your building, building would be, be a separate, separate project, project right? right? And then you, and then you go, go out for a town like vote on a bond, but, but you can't, can't function in an existing building. building. No, no, not, not if you're the town. No, no. Well, you need to just put them out of cars, you need. Right, right. So you're going to add more cars, and you're going to have a, you're going to have to have more space. And that's not a change out of every three years, not a building that has a 50 or a 30-year mortgage on it, but every three years you're doing the same thing. Yeah. Look for the cards. That's what that's they're saying the turnover is on. Yeah. You'll have a capital replacement cycle on those Absolutely. that you have to do. And and Trevor's right. You got your choice. Like, we do it all the time with the dump trucks and and uh, pickups and whatever. It's a, you know, is there enough money in your capital reserve to actually buy it outright? Or do you finance it and pay so much a year for three years or five years, depending on what the item is? And, and that, that'll make a difference in what your capital item is. But you also, once you go down that path, you're either committed to that type of financing going forward or you're going to get a bubble, right? right? So either you're, you're committing to paying for it and having a replacement cycle and that amount of money in the budget every year, or you got a lease payment, and if you want to switch to buying it, you got a pretty big bubble to buy them instead of making a lease payment. But, you know, those are... Those are two things that you can do, but... If you go, and if we go with the, the current inflation rate, $60,000 is not going to be $60,000 three years from now as well. No. I think, have we, um, is the public forum set? Like, did we, did we... Um, yeah, we picked, um... Did we have the moderator? 20, I did not. I didn't get a response from Peter. Um, we got November 28th as the date. I thought we had December 5th. What did we have for December 5th? No? I had written had down here. That might be when you meet again. That's okay. when we meet again. Okay. The 28th is the public meeting. I knew that, but um, do we have a venue? Um, I don't know if we do. We talked about doing it at BTC. That's what we're going to plan after tonight's conversation, if that's where you still want to go. So. I mean, it seems like um, because the... The public we've heard from so far, you know, the Fish Hill residents or whatever who are, you know, like, I rely on state police, state police is great, you know, they, I think you asked them about how long ago that they called and it was like 20 years ago and I think it's important that somebody, I mean, we've heard it, we've all heard it many times, but I don't know, I guess the public hasn't about the current situation with this, with our barracks, where it's important that there's they're going to be able to, somebody's going to need to talk about that at the public meeting so that people understand the reality. I think there's, that is part of it, what the staffing levels are. I mean, they got the FTEs, they just don't have them filled and the challenges they have with that. But the other one is, as soon as you vote to go townwide, you are the primary law enforcement agency. Right, Those right, calls right. are all yours. Well, we, we haven't, I don't think we've gotten anywhere near going townwide. But, right, but I mean, it's both sides, so yeah. they need to understand what their service is, but everybody needs to understand what the actual impact yeah. of both right. that direction is. But I would I just get to clarify in my head, when you if you go town-wide, it's a step-by-step -step process for the voters 
to, to vote that they want to. And then I would think that's piece, What's the step-by-step would, step process? How would you pr present that to the voters if you want to go town-wide? You would present, I'm going town-wide, but then in back of it, you'd have to hire the police officers, and then you'd have to build the building. So that's, I mean, it's, it takes time to build the building. So that, in my head, is like, that's a step-by-step -step process. Oh, you, you, the, vote, you think what the voters would vote on is if you want, just hypothetically, yes. if you want town-wide, we're talking... 2029 or whatever. Right. I'm just saying it's not like you're going to vote on it today and it's going to happen. Well, that's so, the way you made it sound. Well, I don't know. We haven't I, talked I, about what that process is. There right. And that's what I was trying to understand if somebody asked us, what is that process? I don't even understand that myself. Like, if you were going to build a new fire station, what would be the process? If you're going to build Go Town Wide, what does that process look like? Um, well, I can tell you, building a fire station was not fun. So you first got to find somebody willing to step up and do it. Um, it's that's a I don't think we've identified but the level of service needed outside the district. Well, that's a we whole separate. We haven't Joe, heard that we've had a, a tremendous amount of discussion. problems. Can we just finish this one just before we? Because that's well, we're all completely interjecting different. different pieces into it. I'm not the only one that's doing that. Um, you know, well, I think we, if we're going to talk about process, I think there has been some conversation about whether those outside of the district need to vote that they want to be part of the district. Right, um, so would that be step one? I mean, mm -hmm. and if not, then you've got two other proposals, one to stay the way we are and clearly beef up what we have because we don't have enough coverage. And clearly in Vermont right now, there's a lot going on. Um, and, and you brought up a good point last time about the barn hiring security, but I left the meeting thinking, okay, they're hiring security. Why are they hiring security? That's a huge, huge issue that they had to go to that length. And then you've got the one with a modified district. But when we go to a public forum, I, I just would like to get your thoughts on, we've talked to a lot of people during the last weeks, weeks, how are we going to highlight that so we're all on the same page and we all have the same talking points and we're, we're which I think we're trying to do now, but, you know, how are we going to say, like, we've talked to these people and got this input, these people for this input, how are we going to present that as so the voters really understand what we've done in the last few weeks? Um, does it involve doing some kind of paper handout, I mean, are we going to do a slideshow, or how are we going to do that? When we de decide, I mean, those three options. And do we want someone from the state police to come talk about the barracks down there and their challenges, as well as Scott talking for a few moments? Just ask, you know, just think about it. We all need to prepare ourselves for a public meeting. You, you've made an excellent point. I don't know if you practice ahead of time or do something like they do in... Like they do where? Some of us, you know, you sit down and, and actually <laughs> role model or something, yeah. you know, to prepare ourselves for it. Well, I think we, we, have the, we have lots of statistics about the number of times we met and the stuff we talked about and the guests that we've had. We can talk about that. Whether you I mean maybe it should be not only just talking about it, we could do a slideshow, but also a handout for those learners right. who need the visual, but also the oral thing. You know, people need to hear things three times before it actually sinks in. Oh no, that's jurors. But anyway, yeah, I mean, I think that you bring up some great questions, Sheila, about we need to get prepared for that public meeting so that we are. It seems like that you know we've worked hard at this. And, we uh, have worked hard at it. And I think everyone. We want to make sure that people know what we've considered, mm -hmm. and that we're not just drinking the Kool Aid of you know what Scott wants, right? I mean, I don't think that's, and I also don't think that we necessarily, as a committee, w w might have a united front at this public meeting, right? I mean, yes, we well, should. I think we'll have a united front because we're not talking about what our opinions are. I mean, this is our chance to put right. out the different scenarios and some of the facts and let 
the public this tell us what they're thinking. And we need to be really clear about yeah. that. This is not our platform exactly. or our soapbox. Mm -hmm. It's a chance to hear from the public. Yeah. But and it's also a what chance done. to we want educate to know what them on what's hap what we've learned. Mm -hmm. I've learned a lot of things mm -hmm. that's happening in the village and out of the village that I didn't know before. So that's been educational for me. So how do we relay that to everybody? I mean, I know what I think, but you, it's sticking to the facts and making it clear. And I think the mental health issue is huge um, with everybody that's dealing with it. And that, you know, I mean, it's a whole other component to, to what we've discovered. Are we able, able to come up with a, with a confident sheet of facts? Are we able to? Sure. I think you know, we are we can. able to say that the hospital only called in six years five times? Are we, are we able to, uh, you know, I've recorded those numbers as well, right? The school said he's been there, he's been there six years and he's called the police department six times, right? So are we able to give, give them all of the facts of in what they've been paying, paying for? <laughs> I, think that, I, th I think that's important, I think important to, to, to do that. Can, can we look at giving the facts that the state police cover a great share of what happens outside of town? And also some of the most dangerous calls that we may or may not have. We brought in businesses that have all said, "Well, yeah, I'd love to have the police." Well, why wouldn't they say that? You know, if if, if we really think if we really think about that, but can we give the, mm -hmm. the, the total facts to the to the folks? That's what I'm interested in. Uh, I'm happy to put together a PowerPoint thing, and I can you know? send it around to everybody if you want to take a look at it and see. If you want to do a slideshow. But we talked about having a moderator to deal with the public. Yep, and we talked about um, Peter Nowen. Right. But I didn't get a response from him. The other one that came up later on as we were talking was John Benson. I don't know how he would be. Did you get what he's doing. You, you said, Trini, that know. if we decide to go townwide, then once we do that, we've bought the responsibility. Mm -hmm. But... The, the state police would still back us up, is they that right? They would back us yeah. up. But the, all the calls they cover is the primary. We would then be needing to man those and take right. the calls. They would those. only back us up if right. we couldn't do it for some reason. But it shouldn't be any different than it would be now, right, Scott? That if you got called them now, they'd back you up. No matter if we were village or town one. So it's, it's just a bigger area. Calls, uh, I can't remember now. We're kind of playing in the same thing uh, for a family fight, um, and I requested uh, backup, and they were being sent. I had the situation actually under control and need them because of their delayed response, but they were coming. I mean, Scott and I were in a meeting last night, and he told me that, that he could look at a thing at six o'clock last night, and there were three troopers on for the entire region they cover, and one of them was called out on a TSU thing. Morrisville, so they had two troopers in our area to respond to any call that came in. But they come in from other areas, too, because the the accident in Brookfield mm -hmm. had one from Berlin and one from Rockingham. They didn't even have a yeah. a Royalton Barracks one. Right. You know, so they're, they're and yeah, mysteriously... Yeah. Or, or they're driving back from their meeting in Waterbury, right. and it's like, okay, I, yeah. I gotta I go can over go there here. now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. But it, mysteriously on the interstate, when there's a call in the the fire departments up there, they end up with three or four of them there. But that's pretty a good quick. Thing, and it's because like if they can respond well, like that when they can, because mm -hmm. you don't know their story. You know, I always that was also think. middle of the day. You know, I mean, yeah, yeah. Some are, some are. Yeah, yeah. So I think it's. Sheila, I'm glad that you kind of brought up about like the process and the step by step because one of the thoughts that I had had anyway is that, because you're absolutely right. Even if. Overnight, they voted on having a townwide police department with six cars and ten officers and a $1.2 million budget. It, it's not going to happen overnight, even if they vote on it um, and approve it. I had wondered, can we present even a graduated plan that says in 2025 we'll do this? In 2026, this will happen. In 27, this will happen. In 28, this will happen. And then we will get to this goal down here in 2029 or whatever. That uh, sounds like an excellent idea. Uh, and, and I don't know if it's possible to come up with a plan like that. Um, but it seems like it might be 
easier to do and it might be more palatable to taxpayers. But I don't know. It was a thought that I had. So does that mean you have to have multiple votes for the voters who... Yep. I don't know. I, I don't, that's, yeah. I don't know. Yep. I think in the, <laughs> the beginning you need to have a multiple It's a little vote crazy. Yeah. Um, you have to have a separate vote of outside the district. And then, and then to see if outside the district wants, wants this to happen outside the district. I don't think it should be something that's forced upon them from inside the district. So your timing is going to be a challenge here, right? Mm -hmm. Because if you're going to do a vote outside of the district and it fails, then you still need time to do a vote inside the district. If you want to expand, that's a different set outside of the district than if you want to go town-wide. You know, you're... So I think we need to decide about November. those options. Yeah, we're looking at going, you know... By the time we get the public information, we come back in December to make a recommendation up to the board. We're not going to make it in one meeting of that. There's no way. It's too much information I don't, to I don't see us doing it. No. So, you know, we're in that late December early January when the budget has to be approved and now you have you have an interesting dilemma because you're coming back you're going to try to figure out what does that look like do you have to do you're going to have to do some type of you got a couple of votes there yeah. you timing back? wise it's so that's a challenge yeah, and, and maybe it may be training maybe it takes two voting cycles to get there like it takes three years or whatever to start on a building. Maybe it takes two voting cycles to get there. You could recommend a budget for the existing district a budget for, for existing next year. Would vote on that. And a vote to discuss townwide. The townwide. Mm -hmm. And then if, if do the you town, go townwide town or you go expanded? Says first. okay, we want to, we right. do want to expand it. Then what? Then then it it's a combined budget, right? Well, as far as our timing goes, we got to make sure this public meeting happens on the 28th. Yep. So we got to nail down a moderator, and we got to nail down our what venue. the forum is yeah. and the venue and all yeah. that stuff. I mean, that's three weeks away. So can, yeah, yeah. we can get VTC yeah. pretty easy for a venue. I'm not worried about the venue as much as, okay. and I think we can find a person to moderate. There's a few of them out there. It's um, more of a what do we present? How do we present it? And well, can we? What do we do? There? Can I mean? Can we decide on that now? I mean, mm -hmm. I, I mean, I, I think, I think you need to have. I think I'm, I'm going to repeat myself. I think you need to have visuals and handouts. Yes. And I think we need to have somebody who's going to run it through. Um, you know, um, just talking about the facts, about what we've done and who we've seen and what we've heard and the facts and figures in it. Like I, I offered, I'll put together a PowerPoint and I'll send it around to everybody. Um, I can do that very quickly and you all can have input on that between now and then because we don't meet again before the 28th, do we? We haven't been scheduled to, but it would be good, I think, to check in at some point between now and then. I mean, I wonder, should we meet next week or not? Um, because then you've got the week of Thanksgiving. I don't know how flexible is that. Are we meeting that week? I can't remember. No, no, I don't. No. So I wonder if we should meet next Tuesday also. That would be fine with me. I mean, I can do it, but I don't know about anybody else. Just because we're down to the wire. Can we meet Wednesday instead? Can Can I make a comment? You sure can. We We've been dealing with history, and we've been analyzing what has been happening and we do want, you know and we do have to present at a some sort of a presentation factual things but scott do you see issues coming up that are going to require policing that we not yet have experienced maybe that's a blunt yeah, <laughs> yeah, and I don't know how you define it. Look into your crystal ball. Yeah, look at my crystal ball. And, you know, something could happen tomorrow that's going to be a massive police response that could be outside the village, it could be inside the village. I, 
you know, they're talking about a uh, national wide protest uh, coming down, you know, and it could happen here in town. We get the solar eclipse coming in April 24, and you know, they're booking up rooms right here in town. We have another All biblical kinds of stuff. flood uh, that demands any kind of resources all the way around too. Um, I, I don't have that in my... Okay. Yeah. All, all of a sudden... It's a good question. I mean, you do see trends. Like right now, there's a lot of theft. There's yeah. a lot of petty crime, those type of things going on, and those all take a lot of resources. And right now, a lot of random shootings. Right now, um, um, for us in a small Vermont state, I think a huge amount. I'm not sure there. What are they? Though. Seven murders well, or something? Well, homicide rate is way up. It is. Yeah. Yeah. And I know, yeah. In Randolph? No, in Vermont. In Vermont. It's, I just think October spiked us. I want to clarify that. <laughs> yeah. All right, so. Looking so, at all the data that we had, do you want to just dig through it and put some bullet points out there, or do you want people to talk about what things they think are important to show to help sure. guide you? Sure, yeah, because we got the number of meetings, we got the, I have the number of meetings and the people that we uh, had come speak, mm -hmm. what other, what other data you want the, um, I think we should put the fingerprinting. I'm just kidding. <laughs> She's doing it. And how much money we're going to make off that to offset the budget in the future and what it's going to cost Trevor. Um, do you want to have the, what do you want, folks? You tell me what you want in it. You want the safe um, line data? Do you want the. I think um, we've got to do. Um, the number of calls business, all that stuff. A uh, number of calls. Per month, week, day, year. Well, the biggest number is going to be annual, right? right. Um, it's annual for this but, year is from like March till now, but but yeah. And but we have um, didn't we get some of the data? Did we get any of the data from before? Orange from County? when the Orange County? when Orange County was doing it? Uh, I was thinking we've seen that some. That yeah. Do you have that? Because I can go dig in my archive pile and see if there might be something in there. I think the number of calls and it would have been in the, the number that are in the village and out. Yes. Number of calls and then number of calls yes. that are in versus number of calls out. Yep. Does anybody want like the nature of the calls, or do we want um, in just in general like number? I don't know that we want to go through and literally count them to say that there's so we'd have many to speeding or so them. many of this, right. but you might yeah. want to say this includes everything from traffic violations to yeah. thefts to domestic, domestic violence, violence to whatever, to, you know, so just sort of hit the highlights. Maybe you could tell us a list of what you think that was that would be important, do you think? I mean, well, that you see highlighted. From traffic to... Um, I mean, I think you can get it. Like, just hit that some of them are minor things like traffic stops and other things are major, like domestic violence right. or and some are supporting violence the state or... police when they can't get here. Yep. Mm -hmm. Some are Maybe we want to hit on what services the state police are covering, too. Right? These are the ones that Randolph PD is covering, and these are the ones the state police are covering. And mm -hmm. these are the, you know, so it gives a picture of what all the calls are in the town and how they're being provided right now. Maybe the number of hours that you guys are on duty per week. Not each one of you, you know, individually, but are you covering 80 hours a week, 100 hours a week? What is that for you, do you know? I mean, per day. Let's just do it by day. I 
do think it's important for them to get the message that in the existing service, it's not 24-7. Right. That there is yes. a time at which mm -hmm. the Randolph PD goes off and the state police are backing it up. Yep. Um. I can take the budget documents that you've seen yep. and make them smaller for slides in terms of each model. So you get them sort of by broad category. Mm -hmm. Much as we've broken them out you know, by the headers, mm -hmm. and then can repackage these. And so I think when you were all were talking, I had sort of three pictures in my head of that for each model. You might have sort of that budget sheet in terms of what went into it, especially if you're talking about how to scale where we're at, what the existing looks like, and how you sort of scale out. So here's that budget for existing, and then maybe the next slide is tax rate considerations, and then the next slide might be process, because we've hit on that one. So if we end up here, what's that path look like? Mm -hmm. uh, sort of summarize that, and then we'll do it for each of the models, so then you also have that piece. So just going back and try to read quickly through, when we went through all of this last spring, we got an opinion from the attorney on some of these process elements, so we'll fill those out, get him to bless those to make sure that we haven't missed anything, or... They've really been, been there since then. I found the Orange County and State we Police should, March to March. We should I obviously what our proposed in here. modified mm -hmm. district, district was. Yeah, it yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And what about the, about the, um, um, yes. okay. the mental health component of what you have to deal with and the, the drug, you know, that kind of thing that it exists and sometimes also you come in you said on the morning and you have to pick up where the state police need your help they didn't have time to get it I think that's important should the mental health go into the two phases like the immediate crisis part and then what happens after the law enforcement role is done right because we heard there was kind we heard of there that was a gap there. follow right. on yes. Yes. We did. piece and I think when you're showing your numbers your tax numbers for the different <coughs> proposals that it might be helpful <clears throat> if you took an example like an average house cost and what that number is. You mentioned that, Joe. I agree. And I, I think really it's... Really simplify it. Yeah. yeah, it'll make people feel that we're more transparent. A right. lot of people do that. don't understand what cents are. Exactly. Right. right. You know, exactly. so you have to say, okay, if you own a $250,000 home, this is what it would yeah. cost you. Right. If... District remain the same, modified, or right. or, or expanded districts so yeah. that they that they truly understand that numbers. But, and it's based um, on assessment. I think the mental health right. piece, though important, I think Scott had mentioned in a couple meetings back that he fielded three to four calls a month on a mental health thing. Does the state police have that data as well? And I realize it's outside the district, but how many do they go on? In a month, right? Because we've heard Scott say that that that, that he that he that had three to four calls a month. So, because remember, we also had that conversation: could we team up with other towns or whatever for having that embedded mental health worker, if you will? Um, that that said, I think if you're going to do it district wide, <coughs> understanding what that number would be, which would include, okay, how many of the state police actually go on as well to add to that number? Yeah, you you know, said district-wide. You mean town-wide. I mean town-wide. Yeah. Right, okay. right. So, so town-wide, if it were town-wide, how many do they actually go, how many did they actually go on? You know, one thing we couldn't get out of safe line was, well, how many times have you called the police, right? They really didn't have a number for that. Right. They said, well, we've gotten different calls and blah, 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 but, you know, and the same thing, you know, you know like Clara Martin. Well, how many times have you called? Well, we'd like to have them back us, but... How many times? You know, does, does that really happen? I think that I think those are the facts that need to come out. Like I said, the hospital said, well, I've been the administrator there eight years or seven years or whatever it was, and I've called the police six times. You know, same thing with the school. The school said like five times. And I have, again, I, I, I can dig through and I can find those numbers to, to put that out there. Because I think it's important to be able to know those numbers, exactly what they're what, But there's, what I think there's a, the challenge for. with that, though, is what they, some of the comments made and the statistics don't support. Right. They don't reconcile. Right, right. they don't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They don't. That's what I got from when, when SafeLine came in and said, hey, your numbers don't match. Well, theirs the did because they those were the services they provided. Right. Not, and law enforcement necessarily wasn't right. part of all those right. services provided. Right. So you would, right. 
I don't think we can quote any of the safe line data as specific law enforcement services because right. we didn't get that number broke out. Right. It was more right. to give you a taste of like this is the amount of this stuff going on that they're mm -hmm. having to deal Basically, with. that DV is and, a problem. Right. But, you know, like in case you thought it didn't happen in our little town, it does. Right, and 42 mm -hmm. people utilized their service. Not saying it was all police involved, but right. they were there. But I know when you're saying, you know, six happened here or this didn't happen, and the, but in my mind, I'm thinking if it was me and if I needed that service, even if it was once a year, it was there for me. I think we have to be proactive as a, a community to educate people that we might need that service. It's available if we do need it, too. And thank goodness it doesn't happen as many times sometimes, but it's, same it does, with, it's there. Same with, you know, responding to overdoses, you know, like I, I've never needed a, anybody to help me c come out of an overdose, but I, I think it's important that our community heads that service for other people. I mean, it's the yes, same thing. It is. Um, unfortunately, it takes often somebody to actually need the service before they understand that it's valuable. That's right. So just to go back, Neil, you had mentioned, um, and Joe had kind of hit on this with the translation of the sense. So one of the things we've done for some of the regular budget documents have just done these little taxpayer impact tables. We've taken three categories of home value. We mostly do it on the residential piece. It translates the same if your business property value is any of these or something else. But we can put together some of these for each yeah. of the model that show that what that good. increase would be in terms of dollars for the year. Okay. I think that would be good. good. Yeah. And we would just probably keep them similar in format. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So should we do the, this was this year's budget as passed. This is what you should have had, you know, to provide the services in the existing. This is what the tax would look like to do the modified and then to do the town-wide. Yeah, I mean, we could add a couple of more rows, basically, that say FY24 and then sort of show it out. Well, here's what you paid in FY24 for the town, for the district. Yeah. That, so the, the folks that are there that are in the district can see what the difference would be to them. Mm -hmm. I think, think that's important, and then yeah, and then do the new one, and then do the modified and the other, because you're going to change your grain list value going into that budget with each of those scenarios. So you're not going to really have a true comparable. But if they can say, well, today I pay X, under this scenario I'll pay Y, Z. Unfortunately, this is going to come down to money. On a lot of these boats, oh, totally. and we have totally. now with the new changes and the everything happening since COVID and the cost of people for living, we have more people in this town right now on the verge of losing their properties mm -hmm. than we've ever had. And using the food shelf and yep. other services, yep. yeah. Yep. And you know, you're looking at adding this, and I hear people say it's only four hundred dollars or it's only eight hundred dollars. That's huge for a lot yeah. of these families. Yeah. They yeah. can't swing what they got now. That's a big add-on yeah so I think the way it looks at the meeting is we run through the slides anything that's related to budget over to Trevor and he explains that part with the three different I'm pretty sure I COVID that day yeah I'm pretty sure <laughs> <laughs> I'll, come along. Yeah. I'll, I'll get you I'll get you that vaccine <laughs> Right, start with that and then open it up to questions and comments. Yeah, and, yes. just, and the moderator, and who are the options for moderator? Uh, we were looking at Peter Nallen and John Benson's name came up, but oh, we didn't John talk Benson. about him oh, yeah. or not, but I know he does a pretty good job yeah. with some of the Brookfield stuff. But Just making it, the moderator, whoever it is, making it clear that this is not, well, we want to hear from you, you know, if you have questions, we'll try to answer them, but we just want to know, we want to give you this information and then um, hear what your concerns are and what your thoughts are right now. If anybody actually comes to this thing, I mean... Oh, well, I think they're sparked right up. I hope that they There's do. some people sparked right up. I really this. do. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and Although I'll tell you, they don't... Nice, like, it, like, we're... We haven't made any decisions yet, you know, like we're right. still getting, this is our information gathering opportunity mm -hmm. here. So, 
as long as we, I think now I have a much better understanding of our process, so then we can relay that to the public um, and talk about, like, this This could look a lot of different ways. Like, you know, we could have one vote in March, you could have multiple votes on bonds and all kinds of stuff, or we can spread this out over several years and, you know, depending on what the needs are or what your, what the input is. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, is the, is the, whatever goes to the voters in March up to the select board, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so hopefully they'll be at this meeting too. Mm. So, so they have a big understanding of what we present. We talked about warning it as a joint thing. Because if you got more than two members of the board, you have to warn it. Right. Oh. Right. And are we taking notes at this public comment? Like, is Kim going to be able to come to take notes? Or are we going to record it? Or what are we, how do we I think we it? should be able to record it and then having a scribe. For example, might be valuable too. Okay. Um, that's what Montpelier's done with a lot of the flood yeah. response. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they make sure that they capture. They have more than one scribe in some cases. Yeah. Right on the crowd, but. Um, mm -hmm. And then the advertising piece of it. Mm -hmm. Right. The, the mediums that we're going to advertise at this meeting. You know, like I said, I think that we have to use all of the forums. Yeah. Whether it's front page forum. Whether it's Facebook or whatever social media that, that, that that's out things. there, you know, town website, you know, there's, 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 there's just all the different advertising mediums. So the Randall Five, have it, you know? the vibe really brand. sweet. Yeah, nice. it'll, be, it'll be live, so we could use that one too. That's yeah. cool. Yeah, just just so folks do know that it, that, that it's coming. Yeah. And we'll use the newspaper too. Make sure there's something in there. So oh, make yeah. sure we get that. Did we decide that we're meeting next week? Not yet. Not yet. Okay. We're still working through the items to decide if we need to. <laughs> okay. I'm jumping the gun. You are. That's good, though. Um, so, what, how, Peter, now when you say not responding, was that a phone call or an email? Or what was it? it was a phone call. Usually he answers. They still like it. It's, calls it's Mary back. They could be. We'll do some more. Soul searching and I remember that. I can probably pull one from the old ELCT with moderators yeah. training you at first, too. Totally you can do that every time. Just want somebody who's trained in how to handle a large crowd. And That's what we're looking for is just somebody that can lead the <laughs> can write what you do thing and just They're, kind of. Yeah. Their instructors never change, so we just probably work through that list and see. I don't think, I think some of them are near enough by. I don't know if he's still around, but Steve Jeffrey just lives in Northfield, where he did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. Promise him a new bow tie maybe come in, so. He has some pretty cool ones. <laughs> okay. And now I just lost. Do we want to um, say, Kristen, who who came before us so we have a list of who? Yeah, yeah. I so wrote that you did. Yeah. All right. Discuss the final report drafting. Just wanted to make sure that's in your workflow process. You've got plenty to do. You're obviously not at a recommendation point. So that's the vice chair's job, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, and, and we can help with in terms of just building a framework and then and just seeing what you want to put in in terms of, and it would probably follow a similar kind of process of there'd be an executive summary essentially and then overview of process, tasks assigned to the select board, timeline, everything you looked at, everybody came in, go through the, talk about the different budget models, all the different pieces with it, different process elements, and then at some point what goes to the select board is kind of the concluding statement. Recommendations, yeah. right, yeah. So that may follow in along with the, the how Basically, the PowerPoint. Really? Yeah. We can probably cut and paste into our plan. Yeah. 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 Um, should we just be making recommendations or should we express concerns? So, some of we could do what both. I've heard is that there's a concern of affordability 
but also of not having the coverage. Mm -hmm. Like, what does this look like and what, you know, how does that happen? So, you know, that may build us up to a phased piece instead of a cut and dry. Or, like, I think there's some concerns there of, of you know, what does this look like and where do we go? I think we need to express the concern to the select board of wanting the folks that are not currently part of the district to actually get a vote of joining. Like those type of things that are more, you know, kind of things that we want to get in there that aren't, you know, I guess the recommendation could say that you follow this path, but right. kind of why, right. why are we recommending this? spent a lot of time with the group trying to get that 360 degree understanding of everything that's happening and what we need and where we're at and what the gap is between those two. So I think passing that along, that experience and what you've gleaned. Yeah, I think that could sense. be a whole other section too. Yeah. I mean, you could have, we could all agree on certain recommendations, but then we could also have individual concerns or things that we heard about from the public that, you know, of note, you know, we don't want you to miss, do we want... We think it's important that you're aware. Blah blah. Well, isn't the wraparound service or the after law enforcement service one of those? Like, this isn't part of law enforcement, but the town should look at how to work with somebody to follow up with those folks or to take it that next step or mm -hmm. to have that more. You know, whether well, it's I, don't, a I mean, it would be embedded a, worker or whether it's if it ends up in our budget as contractual services or whatever, we've got to explain what that is. Right, but is the person, what well, we heard some of that was more of there needs to be additional services out there for the families and the people impacted by, like, the overdose case and whatnot. Like, that to me isn't necessarily a contracted service in the police budget. That's more of a, you know, we should be reaching out and developing some type of network that, whether right. Clara Martin Center is part of it or whoever's part of that network, but kind of what is that that Scott can say, hey, here, Here's a card, call this group, they'll help you with how to get services or how to get this yeah. person this or that or whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. That to me isn't part of the police budget. It's not part of what we're right. tasked with, right. but it's something the select board ought to have a heads up of, hey, this is a service that's needed. It would benefit, there were certain people in the community that would benefit from this. Like, don't lose track of this item. Right, kind right. Of a we list. can say that. I mean, we've never even just, I don't think we've talked about here about the lack of a turning point center, that we're the only county without one. Um, I mean, there's that, for thinking of the overdose thing, like that's what every other county does, is they have recovery coaches and they have people embedded in the at the hospital, you know, even the tiny hospitals, uh, to take on the overdose people. Um and those folks, the money, the town doesn't pay for those folks either, but it's a service that is necessary. Mm -hmm. Here we are, the only county without one. Really? The whole state. Yeah. I didn't know oh, that. I didn't know that. We do not have a turning point center. And there's been an effort for seven years trying to get one, mm -hmm. working with Gifford and stuff, and it has not happened. I think we heard some of those things, too, where folks were like, here's a forum, maybe we can bring this issue forward, and we don't want to lose track of those, but... No, They're not necessarily right. going to be in the work product we do if we don't make that list of, right. kind of right. pay right. attention to these pieces. One of the things, that we heard, of the things I, that I was thinking back to is when we had the Orange County Sheriff and we had compared it to the budget today, someone brought up the thought, and maybe it was you, Scott, that they came with their own they didn't have as much overhead as what we have to have now because they had all their vehicles, they had all their police, you know what I mean? So they could offer us that service at a lower amount. That and is spread out county kind of well, yeah. it's, it's not one town. Exactly, but when we take this on ourselves, then it makes perfect sense that it's going to cost us more than it did when we contracted mm -hmm. with them mm -hmm. because we have to get those other things. I think... I don't know who wants to throw that in there if that's asked, but it's well, a and, point. Well, and speaking of which, you know, I wonder if there's going to be people who are like, why can't we just have the sheriff do it again? You know, and who's going to explain like that they are not, they're not capable? I mean, I, don't have a, I won't speak for them, but it doesn't seem right. that they have the staff that. But they I did, wonder if, if George should be invited as well to this public forum. I don't know. Uh, it's only fair to give him some heads up of what we've done and what, where sure. we're going yeah, with this, though, right. too. Like, yeah, right. 
don't just and drop I think it that in. we have George, we have the state police, or whoever else wants to be well, a you, part of it. If you look at the history of it and the budgets I have, you know, before the Orange County Sheriff, well, the police department sort of disbanded, if you will, and the Orange County Sheriff came in and took over. Their budgets were $650,000, give or take. Of course, that was a number of years ago. Five years ago? Right. More, if not, maybe. You know, whatever it may be. But anyway, so, they and then they reduced the budget down to that $500,000 in whatever way that, that uh, they, were able to, they were able to do that. I don't know. And then here we come back five years later with, if it's just the town, an $800,000 budget, well, it actually kind of falls in line to where they were. Because I think basically that there, there, there may be some thought out there, not, not accusing anybody of anything, but I'm more saying that you know, it was more almost spread in kind of a county-wide budget. You, you, you know, if, if you will, well, we come with our cars, and we come with this, and we come, we come, we come with all that, you know. So it reduced their budget for that period of time, and then when they said, well, we no longer can do this, we don't have the staff, or whatever, or whatever the, the, the whole reason really, really, really kind of shook it off to be, um, hence Randolph went back and said, okay, we're going to have a police department, and guess what, it's going to cost this much. And then the public said, well, we don't want to pay that. We want to pay that, <laughs> right, right, right. You know, what, what we had paid. That's you know? So here we sit today. Here we sit today. Right. Okay. Yep. Trevor, do you remember which meeting we had that, that got canceled at the last minute? Was it in September? It was September. Yeah. One of the September ones? Yep. Well, we had one just recently that we changed the date on. October, I thought it was. I thought the beginning of October. Well, maybe it was. It was the beginning of October. Because a couple of us actually came to the meeting. We pushed it one week. We pushed it a week, right. We pushed it one week forward. Yeah, we did. We just moved it to the next week. So it might have been the third. It was, uh, let's see. Well, we met October 17th, so it must have been the week before that, like the 12th or something. The 10th? 11th, 10th, yeah. Mm -hmm. Might have been there. Alright, we got it. somewhat of a Yeah, uh, October tenth was postponed and then so you met seventeenth and the twenty fourth. Right. Okay, yeah. thank you. I think otherwise you were check your full calendar. And uh, again I would like to ask if we if we were to meet next week and we did talk about throwing another meeting here before the public hearing, which I think is a great great thing to do. Um, can we meet is anybody amenable to meeting on Wednesday versus Tuesday? Um, I can meet next week on Tuesday, but not Wednesday. The, the Tuesday is better for me. I can, we can get you set up. Wednesday, I would just be remote. Um, but I, I'm available either one. I mean, I might be able to get you back, back on time on Tuesday, but I don't, I don't quite know. I think Wednesday might be a problem for me. I, sure. I might be a little bit late on Tuesday, that's all. Just, but I, I, I'll be here. I'm Would it help it. if we change some time? I don't want people to go five. in the middle of the night because I was more thinking, you know, <laughs> just, I might not get out of the woods until, you know, whatever. Dark. What, what, right. You know, dark and dark is five. So, so dark, and dark I'm, 30. I'm, over, I'm over in Bethel. It's just, I, I, I stay right up till You don't dark. have to dress up for us. Well, well I'm, I'm not come. coming in in my yeah, traditional yeah, elmo fun plaid, you know. <laughs> Trevor will make fun of me since I, since I picked on his beard this week. You know, you know, I think you should wear that next time. I know. Whatever I can do, I'll be here. <laughs> so we're sticking with Tuesday? Yeah, we'll stick with Tuesday. Oh, yeah, uh, one I way or the other, I'll get here. I might be 15 yeah. minutes. I'm just coming off Christian. Are you going to smell? No, I don't spray <laughs> this stuff on myself. You know, no. So no hockey gear or anything? No, no, no hockey gear. Not as bad as hockey. <laughs> 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 uh, benchmarking exercise status update. Nothing new. I'll that. that on there for you. <laughs> Research follow up tasks for next meeting. Sounds like we've got a few related to the forum. Um, I'll put together the PowerPoint between now because pieces, we yeah. got a holiday weekend. I got all kinds of time. Thank you for um, I'll have um, all kinds of time. <laughs> can we, Thank you for we can doing copy that this? Yeah. I'll get a yeah. copy of this to you too. That'd be run it. This yeah, is the Orange County oh, the Orange and County. State Police from March to March. Okay. That should give you some some reason. I had it in my archives here. Usually I have those archives piled in with other archives at home. Okay. Um, 
communication and correspondence? Before I said it, let me just think. We had the one from Marty about his communication that wasn't in the minutes. So that's the communication you had. Right. Mm -hmm. Did and, and somebody told me about a, a letter in the editor to the newspaper. Nothing that came in our formal communication, but there was a letter to the editor in the newspaper this week. Mm -hmm. Okay. From the same people, I think, who came to the as, and spoke. Yes, it was in the public yeah. Yeah. comment. And so, they said the same thing that they said here. Yeah, mm -hmm. in the paper. Don't need the, don't need the police services. Oh. We're happy with VSP. Oh, from official. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. I didn't see that one. All right, the next one is the one y'all jump at. Well, well are adjourned. we ready to? I move that we adjourn. I can hear stop, Scott's stomach growling. I move that we adjourn. I second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.